Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Just come to look at this Ford Kuga. Uh, it's got a DPF issue. Now, she said she's had the DPF replaced sometime last year, and the problem keeps persisting where the engine management light comes on. Uh, sometimes if she takes it on a long enough drive, the light goes off, but then it'll come back on, and then it goes off, and then it comes on. She's had it back to the garage a few times trying to resolve it, but with no luck, and she's had it at another garage who confirmed it is a DPF problem, but there's nothing they can do to fix it. So I'll try and see what I can do. Okay, so I'm inside the car. I think it's one of these push button starts. There we go. Uh, all right, so we've got an engine management light on there. 91,000 miles, really low mileage for a car this year. So probably part of the problem. I'm gonna use the launch UK Euro Tab 3. We'll try and do a quick scan here. Might have internet connection issue. Okay, we're in. Just waiting for that to load. Almost there. Okay, we'll do a high speed scan. Don't know what these are. Can communication. See what these modules are. Battery park, short circuit, battery low voltage. Yeah, so it looks like she might have a weak battery, or the battery's been off, or something's been going on. Uh, PCM particle filter below threshold. All right, that's not what I was expecting. Um, from what she sounded like, it sounded like she had a DPF that was blocked or not having successful regens, but. P2002 could mean that DPF's damaged. Right, we're going to go to data stream. And we'll find the differential pressure of the DPF. HPA is zero. Let's give it an accelerate up. It's not moving. So we've either got a pipe burst uh, to the sensor or the sensor's not working. Let's do this speed with the engine there so you can see what I'm doing. Is it that one? I'm not sure. No, it's a synchronization. It's the synchronization is the engine speed I'm looking for. I don't want the synchronization. There we go. As you can see there we're accelerating the engine up, but we're not getting, oh hang on a minute, let me just do that again, if we do it high enough we're getting something over. Ah, so that would probably explain why when she has it at high revs we are getting the light disappear. She said when she took it on a long run with a rev side, the light went off, but as soon as she got back off the motorway, the light came back on. So if we hold the revs high enough, it's getting a reading. That's strange. Right, so I'm not really sure what's going on here, but that has definitely not been replaced. That is the DPF filter there. That's definitely the original one from the car. See those bolts were never open there, ever. So it hasn't even been taken off and been cleaned. I don't know what's going on here then. Just gonna take this engine cover off. Just take a little bolt out of that. Um, it does look like this has been replaced at some point. Let me just get a light on. That's it. Not sure, it's, it's got an original Ford stamp on it. It's got a bit of dust on it, but it's hard to tell if that's been changed recently, but not very recently. But I'm talking about in the last year. Okay, so I've got the sensor now disconnected. Didn't even realise I've got these pliers with about 10 year and I don't really ever use them. 
exactly what they're for pushing these pipes off so now we've got this pressure gauge here you can set it to pressure or vacuum just going to see if we've got any pressure in these pipes make sure the pipes are not blocked which are affecting the reading so we can see we've got no pressure there in the pipes and we do that on both sides Okay, that's now that's passed that test. So the second part is to actually test the actual sensor. Connect that same gauge up to that. Put a little bit of pressure in it. And see if we're getting that reading come up on here. So it looks like we are. Well, well, yeah, we are getting a reading, but that's completely off because we should have about 500 HPA there now. We've got 7,800. So it looks like we have a faulty sensor. So the reading is not matching what I'm putting in on here. This is what the value that sensor is given the ECU of the car, but that's the actual pressure that's in that I'm putting into the sensor. It's about 500 when we're getting way different on there. All right, so I don't have a sensor here with me now, which is really annoying, but uh, we can try and calibrate that sensor. If the options in here, differential pressure sensor values, yep. Yeah. Okay, we've got the engine running. We're just waiting for that to calibrate. Okay, that's successful. Okay, that hasn't worked. Okay, now we're testing the engine at 2500 RPM. We've only got 11 millibars of pressure. So the DPF is damaged. So it's a bit of a strange one, this one, because it seems like we've got two issues. The sensor is not reading correctly. So we had four millibars of pressure at idle and about 12 at 2500 RPM coming from the DPF, but the sensor as well is to given the wrong readings also so the sensor is damaged but also when we test the DPF the DPF itself is damaged as well so one thing that I can say about these these older cars are not too fussy about the DPF pressure not as fussy as the newer models um, we have got some DPF pressure we've got four at idle um, if we go up to sort of 35 it is going up to sort of 25 30 millibars of pressure it is lower than it needs to be but I'm not sure if we put a new sensor in you know will it tolerate that um, I'm not, yeah, so I'm not really sure what to do here, really, to be honest What the best option is I mean, obviously the, the best option is to replace The DPF and the sensor The woman is saying she can't afford that um, And I've asked her to have a look at the paperwork that, she, that she's had done from the last garage And she can't find it And she said, well, she's not even sure now if they charge her to replace the DPF or not um, she just knows that she was charged £980 but she don't know what for um, I've asked her to have a look at the paperwork but she doesn't can't seem to find it so uh, we're never going to know the true story behind that I don't think so um, it's now just a case of do I put a sensor on it and reset calibrate the sensor and hope that the light stays off um, it's either that or you replace the DPF as well but uh, she doesn't can't really afford to do that so you could, I suppose, do one at a time, change the sensor first, and if you know if it if it's still given uh, engine management light issues, then you could decide if you want to go down the route of changing the um, entire DPF itself. Okay, so we're just going to end this here as a diagnostic video because I don't think we'll be going really any further on it. So see you in the next video.